Considerable curiosity is generated world over because of Kerala's successful fight against COVID-19. This is the third dialogue on this topic from Vicharve in a series of conversations on the subject of Kerala model of healthcare. So far, at least three dailies and one website have taken material directly from interviews or through the interviewer. In this video, we'll be watching two activists engage in conversation. To begin with, let me say something about Vicharved. Vicharved, meaning quest or inquiry of thoughts, is a Pune-based collective platform launched by progressive-minded persons in Maharashtra. The core goal of Vicharved is to promote creative thinking and free expression of ideas. Vicharved conducts annual conferences on various social topics. Along with this, the major and consistent activity is running a YouTube channel where a number of its thought-provoking short films and lectures on various topics are presented. With a few videos in Hindi and English, this being the fourth such video, which are where the attempts to study issues and events outside Maharashtra too. For this dialogue, we have with us Vinaya Malati Hari inquiring on behalf of Vicharve about the structure and dynamics of Kerala's battle against coronavirus. Vinaya is based in Pune and has a long association with people's science activities in Maharashtra and elsewhere. She has been active amongst workers and women too. In all, she has been involved in social life for four decades. She is mainly focusing on this unique panchayat system in Kerala, considered to be the backbone of the state's determined and successful fight against COVID-19. Answering the queries will be Dr. Joy Edelman, the Director General of Kerala Institute of Local Administration, better known as KILA, K-I-L-A, in its abbreviation. Dr. Elamon has been the national resource person of the Ministry of Panchayat Raj for decentralized participatory planning by panchayats through Gram Panchayat Development Plan, better known as GPDP. He has also been a key trainer for sustainable development goals known as SDGs. In the last part of this interview, he speaks about Kerala's preparedness for climate change. He is an expert on decentralization, local governance, public health program development and implementation, especially related to disease pre prevention activities like improving water and sanitation, immunization, health education, nutrition, etc. etc. The list of his awards and assignments is long. I have mentioned here only those areas in brief related to our topic under consideration. So, let us listen to his views on these aspects in relation to Kerala's fight against COVID pandemic. Hello, uh, Dr. Joy Lemon. We welcome you on Vicharvet platform, Active in Maharashtra. Thank you very much for sparing your time for such a busy schedule. The Kerala's fight against COVID is commendable for not only India, but it is recognized all over the world now. Here, Dr. Jai Ilaman is the Director General of Kerala Institute of Local Administration, an autonomous body of Kerala government working on Panchayat Raj governance. So, my first question, uh, Dr. Jai, is about Kerala's robust public health care system and a unique Panchayat Raj system. How are these two systems coordinating their efforts to combat corona pandemic in Kerala? Could you elaborate a little? How you have achieved this magic number? 
There is no magic here. Hmm. So it's history. So, for example, we are talking about the public public health care system and the Panchayat Raj system. See, so, right from the beginning when Kerala was formed, we had Comrade Yemas Nambudripad as the first chief minister at the ministry. Kerala has taken a path towards welfareist, towards people-oriented approach. So that hegemony prevailed over the years. Hmm. Hmm. The goal was set, the path was set, and we moved from there, looking more at service sectors like health, like education, like land reforms, and all. So fundamental issues which is. And so naturally the public health care system was also one of the major agendas at that time. And this has developed over the years. But when it comes to Panchayatraj system, see, Kerala had transferred various subjects to the Panchayats. Mm. And health is one of them. Mm. And all the local health institutions are transferred to the Panchayats. For example, you take the case of primary health center. Mm. Health center is the Gram Panchayat. Community health center is with the block panchayat, the intermediate panchayat. Mm. And then the district panchayat has the district hospitals. So all the administrative development activities go through this. And the technical support comes from the concern department. And all staff, including the doctors, is part of the panchayat system. They report to both. They report to the panchayats as well as to their line departments in that case. Which means a panchayat, a gram panchayat has at least one qualified doctor with them. Mm. See, that is the system. And then we have the plan. And there is a section on health, health development. And so every year in the annual plans, health, development, health sector development is also part of it. So this is how the has developed. And when it comes to the COVID-19 situation, see, we have committees set up at every level, at the panchayat level, at the ward level, and all kinds of places. And then all of them work together. Mm -hmm. The leadership of the elected representative. If it is in the ward, it is the ward elected representative. At the panchayat, it is the panchayat president. So this is how the system gets activated. So this committee system exists, and everybody comes and broad umbrella of the, under the broad umbrella of the Panchayat. So that is how system works. So the, when, how, when you ask me how these two gets coordinated, it's already part of it. <laughs> it is part of it. But that, I would say it in that way. But the good thing is that during this COVID situation, this hmm. has become more strengthened because hmm. That coordination, that unity has become. Okay. Otherwise, earlier, of course, there will be some minor hitches and all those kinds of things, then two things come together. But at the moment, mm -hmm. also, this has a facilitator for strengthening that relationship. How all other supportive services, like as you said just now about food, water supply, shelter, and sanitation, etc., etc., were pulled in. Because here in Maharashtra, what we observe is conflict or some miscommunication at every level in various departments, whether it is health, education, sanitation. How this convergence smoothly operates in your state? See, the thing is, uh, as you go up, now this sectoral division comes in. Mm -hmm. For example, at the national level, the ministries will be different. It's all parallel work in silos at the state level. Like that, once it comes more to the grassroots, more to the local level, mm. it exist as separate units, separate mm. divisions. The, the point of convergence A will be at the local level, and that will be the bias. So naturally, at the local level, this is possible. But it will be difficult at the higher levels. That's all. So when you ask me how these are all mobilized for all this water and sanitation, all kinds of things. See, the panchayats are able to coordinate with all other agencies. 
because as I said, they are all part of the panchayat. Mm -hmm. All these officers are most of these officers are reporting to the panchayat. They are part of the panchayat. They are considered to be the staff of the panchayat. So naturally, it's easier for them to coordinate. And uh, since you asked about all these uh, schemes and other things, see. We, in the lockdown period, we announced that we have to start community kitchens. Mm -hmm. 36 hours, every panchayat, every local body had a community okay. kitchen. So far, Great. 85 lakhs food packets have been distributed by them. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and out of that, around 75 lakhs is home delivery. Mm -hmm. Agencies. Whether it is like London body, ASHA workers, health staff, food industry, we have several group, groups, mm -hmm. and the panchayat staff. See, all of them work together and all are under the umbrella of the panchayat. So the coordination mm -hmm. is very easy. The coordination actually happens easily at the local level where there is no parallel mechanisms. As you said, and now we all know that Kerala state mobilized a massive voluntary involvement, some lacks of people, 7 or 8 lakh people are involved, which is really commendable. And uh, there are various organizations like KSSP, science organizations and environment organizations and trade unions and women and youth organizations and citizens, etc. of uh, various social and political backgrounds. Were there any clashes and tensions? How do you handle them? When people come together, there will be, of course, there will be tensions, there will be issues, there will be conflicts and other things. But the, at the local level, people are able to manage those tensions, deal with those tensions, and come to a consensus on such matters which are important to the people at the moment. Mm -hmm. But in the case of this COVID, what I say is that mm. we do not take it as individual organizations and groups. Mm. Our chief minister had made it very clear time and again that hmm. we all need to be together. Hmm. There is no banner. Hmm. That was one of the first messages which had gone through is that hmm. we don't walk under the, any banner. Hmm. Hmm. And oh. so, see, there, there is a portal to register as volunteers. That is clear. There is also having people, they can work with the panchayats. But mm -hmm. not as individual organization where I come in and say I am this and I provide food to you and then I write which is donated by or supported by this organization, this funding agency, nothing of that. Mm -hmm. We want mm -hmm. it is the panchayats, panchayats is the people's panchayats, so we work together. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when it comes to other say providing funds. You can actually donate it to CNDRF, the Chief Minister's Disaster Relief Fund, mm -hmm. and that is the only fund. Mm -hmm. And at the law, many things are done with voluntary contribution in terms of money and material, mm -hmm. also physical. Mm -hmm. into so these are all possible avenues for working together. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you ask me, we mentioned about the SSGs, for example. When it mm -hmm. comes to we have the Kurumasri SSG movement. Mm -hmm. See, everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah, everywhere. In community kitchens, in home isolation monitoring, you say the data collection, counseling, mm -hmm. and everywhere the Kumbhasri moves. The oh, arts are there, the Anganwadi workers are there, health mm -hmm. workers are there. See, it's all to be noted that all of them are not mere workers. See, that's also mm -hmm. the Sometimes he use people. Mm -hmm. Here, they are also being represented in various committees formed for action. See, in mm -hmm. We actually bring in all these people to do work, voluntary work wow. service. But here they are also part of the planning and decision making process where they are also, their representatives are also part of the committees and other things. So that makes a lot of difference. So there's a lot of there's a lot of avenue, especially because that is why we have around three and a half lakhs volunteers registered working with the panchayats. And of course, hmm. you understand that. Kerala always had a culture of volunteerism. Mm. We take a case of literacy movement. From there we had this BGVS and all coming up. Yes. We started with the Ernakulam District Literacy Mission, District mm. Literacy Program. From there, if you take, 
then we had the resource mapping exercise happening participatory mm -hmm. then we had the people's plan campaign and uh, everywhere tourism was a major factor and mm -hmm. we as we have been thinking that this volunteerism mode has gone down the youngsters don't participate and the youngsters are not interested in all these things mm. but in 2018 when the floods came we found that the youngsters were more eager to volunteer than many others and they did an excellent job mm. so that is making a difference mm. even volunteerism mm -hmm. culture is still there but it is so that is also history right. so and then when you ask about the conflicts definitely no. at the state level we have political conflicts naturally hmm. Hmm. so what do we hear see on tvs and other things and cha discussion channel discussions and all about lot of issues and discussions but if you go to a panchayat where the covid prevention activity is happening where every party is represented in one way or the other in all these panchayats and they all work together so that is yes. at the uh, state and all levels you may have conflicts but at the local level for covid prevention activities all of them are together uh, was there any conflict as regards scientific outlook as we know kerala is following scientific path but at the national level the scenario is something different central government was appealing for tali bajao diya jalao kind of things how kerala followed a different scientific path we i can go on and go on talking see but <laughs> cut it short see okay then the epidemic was reported from china hmm from that time onwards the state went into action hmm and others had not thought about covid hmm. our health system had already started looking at it right and the definite system was designed with surveillance chances of testing is there the monitoring is there and immediately the first case had come in we had brought them into quarantine hmm. come in home isolation the treatment everything and at state level in the health sector there is the state level rapid response team under the leadership of the health minister with the after the entire activities with regard to health aspects of the pandemic mm. the state medical board which is in charge of the technical clinical aspects of case management and finally there is an expert committee chaired by dr b ikbal whom some of you might know so yes. this other system was developed initially but later the who declared it as a pandemic so from epidemic it became a pandemic and then it was also this uh, at the national level it was this it is i mean decided it as a national disaster yes. but it was decided as a national disaster mm. that state disaster management authority comes into play major role mm. the chairman day to day monitoring of all activities are done on a regular basis details come from the grassroots like the panchayats consolidated at the district level and then at the state level there is a war room with high level officers for all relevant departments which works on a 24 into 7 basis each such department has a covid cell see you can understand every day in the evening at around 5 or 5:30 our chief minister and health minister and the minister addresses the press the press addresses the people because it's on channel live and they come out with every small details for the last Hours, which means they do a homework to collect all these things from the local to the state level. So that is the way in which it works. The meticulous planning, meticulous uh -huh. which happens, I mean, that makes a lot of difference. Uh -huh. For example, we have already prepared for the quarantine centers for those who are back. We have already prepared for a first line treatment centers if things go out of hand. all these things have already been planned in advance so this is the kind of planning and management which happens and i mean when i said about all these quarantine centers first line treatment centers all these things happen at the local level so it's all planned well managed well that's how i see it at every level 
and it's mm. transparent. That's also there. Transparency, yes, but to what extent? Could you please tell us the details about CM's daily address to the people? Here, everybody is eager to know about that because that is all in Malayalam. So we could not follow that. See, transparency has a lot of meanings, basically. But mm. it, is, it is for accountability. That's different. Mm. Good governance. That's. But in this context, it's not simply accountability. One, mm. it's actually providing con confidence. Confidence to the people. But it is also sending a message. That this is the situation. We are not hiding anything. If there are five COVID positive cases today, we are outrightly, our chief minister is saying that we, today we had five cases from this and this and this districts, whether it is coming from outside or from inside, all these all things this. every day, is, which also provides an idea I whether something beyond uh, and uh, going into social tra transition and all kinds of things. All kinds of things. The people are aware. Mm -hmm. This is a one. So it gives us a it gives the people confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, when the government knows what it is, mm -hmm. what is the situation, and he also mentions about what are the actions taken. And during this process, if questions come and which are, we can actually have a look at the way the CM answers those things which he doesn't know at that time. Mm -hmm. He frankly says. I don't know at this time, we will check it and get back to you. Mm -hmm. And if give suggestions, grievances, then definitely follow up action is announced. So this is the way, it's not populist kind of thing. It is actually being accountable to the people as well as good ones. Okay, that is how it works. So that provides this kind of uh, transparency, provides that kind of confidence. Second, every day we also announce to a large extent various sources of funds which are coming in and it's all available on the website. It's all available on the website. And if you go back to our uh, dashboard on COVID, so most of you might have seen, mm. it covers everything, every day what happens, you see, even this curve, the meaning of this COVID curve, Oh. How it goes up, how it goes down, all this anyone can understand and deal with it. We also say how many people are in isolation today, how many have gone out, all those oh, no. there, district wise, and okay. So, this gives a lot of uh, under. I mean, this is also a message to the people that this is how the system works, this is how the epidemic or the pandemic is happening. Mm -hmm. You need to understand all these things, and so it's an educational thing also, but more than that. It's actually instilling confidence among the people. That's how it happens. We read uh, that uh, your state is managing 20,000 residential camps for migrant workers. What you call you guest workers. You call them guest workers with physical distancing. Uh, are there any other facilities? like sports, mobile phones, etc. provided. How you have been able to convince them to stay in quarantine for such a long period? And uh, what are the arrangements made by the state of Kerala to send the guest workers to their native places? Is state government spending on to and fro travel? Or they are going on their own? We have been following a policy that uh, some of you have named it as, uh, named them as not migrant workers, we, officially it is mentioned as guest workers. Guest workers. It is not migrants who are coming here, they are our guests kind of thing. That's not just because of food, even before that, officially mm -hmm. declared as guest workers. So, guest workers. So what we did was, when these things were happening, so this, we did a large scale we can't call it survey, but the mapping of mm -hmm. migrant workers or guest workers, where they stay. Mm -hmm. So there are mm -hmm. three, three ways in which they stay. They uh, stay with, the, under, uh, with their contractors, for example, or they mm -hmm. rent, they take uh, buildings on rent, or they mm -hmm. have small houses 
on trend also kind of thing so this is how it is. so first thing we did was that we mapped their conditions where they whether their living conditions are suitable for social distancing and other things but then of course there was also the messages given and the, all this because we know that we have this break the chain campaign where uh, these things uh, like social distancing and sanitize I mean, san- san- using of sanitizer or hand wash all those things like that these are all there and wherever their living conditions were not good enough for social distancing and other things the camps were organized small and large by the local governments with the support of the labor department and then they have been given food and accommodation and all their facilities from the community kitchen so mm-hmm. then those were staying in their own their own buildings and camps rented places mm-hmm. we provide, the community kitchens provide them food so naturally we prepare the kerala food even if we prepare the north indian or eastern food it will be the kerala taste so some mm-hmm. like that in those cases we provide them with food item kits so that they will prepare for them mm-hmm. so this is how it is because our government the chief minister himself right from the beginning had announced that mm-hmm. the workers are our priority no one should suffer so this has been happening so now that when they are going also we i mean actually send them off with food packets and other things which were is or something like that and uh, when that is how it is done but i mean i mean they have to register and then go not that everybody is directly just jumps out to the train and other things i mean it's in a priority basis and especially those with women and families and other things they go first like that it's all on registered and they go like that they don't flock together and just go like that so they are brought from their camps and then only those who are registered and prioritized they go like that. so some order and some management principles are applied on all these things when you are providing so many facilities and things why they still want to go back to their own places See, many of them have been part of our society in one way or the other so there are also local local relations and other things so it depends upon but basically fundamentally there is an issue it's not about food and other things naturally they would like to go back to their houses that mm-hmm. has been there always see because they also know what is happening in their own places their own places mm-hmm. and there they get panic signals yes but things are not that good in their own places so naturally they would like simply be there so that mm. is a myth which we have found it very difficult to tackle even if we just give them confidence but ha oh. like to be back that is an issue it's the face uh, you provided uh, okay. mobile uh, this thing also na uh, yeah, expenses yeah, mobile sim <laughs> many many cases when yeah. more than the food to call their house call their house to call. yes yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, is, i i and the provider and other thing so uh, and how what are the arrangements for uh, sending them to their homes that is also taken care by uh, uh, kerala government the whole uh, money and uh, things no, money is we don't provide money okay we only provide, we take them up to the railway station railway stations okay Registration on a priority basis and a systematic way. They have to register their camp from the camps. I mean, all those kinds of things are done, and then all the food is also arranged. Now, my last question is uh, about some climate crisis and its linking to the health. Your personal academic interest is also in climate change. and we all know that because of this climate change we will have to face such epidemics in future also so taking into consideration this situation could you please tell us what needs to be done any special comment or guidelines for future planning okay since you are talk you are talking about the climate change and other things see we have the we had the sendai framework for the disaster management then we had the I mean, conference of parties uh, decisions 
then we had the ipcc intergovernment Pan panel on climate change report climate change which mentioned that we are going to have health crisis health epidemics or pandemics in the future so this was all as the climate change aspect so and we have been experiencing things both other disaster natural disasters as well as the biological disasters if you look at it in that and uh, this is going to happen so we need to be prepared see for example at the moment what we are trying to do is that we are actually uh, going to have the monsoons now naturally we planning for the pre monsoon efforts because we are also sure that or we look that there are other communicable diseases coming in especially mosquito borne and other things because after the monsoon we have dengue or dengue fever or chikungunya or some coming so we are getting prepared for that and of course um, um probably our monsoons go up to august and july august could be at possible flood month also so we need to get prepared for that and which we are trying to do that and in fact i forgot to mention in december 2019 we had started all our local governments have started preparing the local level disaster management plans and we were met then this covid struck us but those panchayats which had already done the preliminary work the draft reports disaster management reports hmm. all of them were waiting for them while dealing with covid though at that time more was on natural disasters like flood and drought and uh, landslides and all but of course this was also part of it and so naturally we need to get prepared and there local disaster management plans need to be there which we have been doing at the, under the leadership of the panchayats from kila side we are also we are also doing something called local action plan on climate change where we had the mitigation part and the adaptation part and all kinds of things so these are all mixed we are in one basket kind of thing but but we are sure that we need to be prepared for the future in fact one more thing our government has initiated just now is something called supiksha program supiksha program where we are looking at making ourselves self sufficient self reliant in food items we are not at the moment how we think is that this whole thing is happening across the country and across the globe which means other states are also going to have problems with regard to agriculture farming especially one now they will not have been able to sow it at the right time in the right way which means in future there is a possibility of lack of food items coming which means we need to prepare for that so we have declared that not a single property would lie fallow or vacant without cultivation if oh. if you have a property and if you are not doing it the panchayat can organize groups of farmers of people volunteers who can actually do the work a lot of things are going to happen that they not only just cultivation it could be also about uh, milk fish all kinds of things the massive program is happening just started this week called subiksha so actually thinking of future also because we are thinking that we are thinking the lines that we need to face many other things in future if you look at the climate the disasters the covid itself and other things so this is the kind of plan in fact i wanted to say that lockdown period for us was a planning period we have been planning for future during the lockdown we have been getting ready for the future whether it is for the quarantine centers first line treatment centers or receiving our people from outside but also for a long time long term future we are also thinking about food security and other things and being self reliant and self sufficient in our own self thanks dr joy for such a futuristic vision for our listeners and particularly for people in maharashtra this will help us on both the planes one as you said correctly self sufficient in food which is the basic need of the families and second 
it helps to combat all epidemics without sufficient food the immunity of the people will be vulnerable and with this looming climate crisis likely to worsen near future more viruses may erupt so keeping this in view the agricultural planning that you are doing at large for every household is very very important actually this needs to be done nationwide and at each state and district level i hope the viewers from all over india especially maharashtra learn from your experiences of planned and collective work and hope they also active from bottom up that is from gram panchayat to state level and work collectively thanks thanks a lot for such an enlightening deliberations thank you thanks, thanks.